Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the midday on this fine looking Wednesday. I'm Art Rascone with your news update. Here we go. Let's begin with weather because there is a storm out there, specifically Tropical Storm Cristobal. Here yep. is Colin Myers. You're right. It seems early in the season, Art, but you know, and, and a lot of people probably heard Art today that it made landfall. Nowhere near here. And it is set to make another landfall, yes, but right now it's over the Bay of Campeche made a brief landfall. It's going to come back out over the Gulf waters. We'll talk about all that in just a second. I don't want to let our guard down just yet. You may see posts flying around on social media. Don't believe them yet, okay? Tracks are nowhere near certain until you get a reemergence in the water. And we already know initial tracks, even if it stays in one place, are uncertain. So I'm going to show you what my thinking is on that. But I am cautiously optimistic, but we still got to watch it. A few thunderstorms already building in from the coast. Some of these briefly heavy. Don't be surprised. This will be the trend this afternoon. As such, of increased rain chances to 60%. So I'm glad you're watching the midday on whatever streaming device you are, because you're getting the latest on this in real time as these are now developing. Thunderstorms going up. High res future track both models show activity pushing through so i think most of our counties have a good chance today so i've increased chances of rain and then by sundown eight nine o'clock we'll see that dissipate loss of daytime heating and we're done now let's go over to crystal ball the latest on it right now pressure down to 995 it's not bad okay there it is it's actually moving south Believe it or not, it's starting to move south, retrograding its previous direction against its previous direction. So it's going to move south and southeast up through the Yucatan. And then it's this that concerns me a little bit. Anytime you get a storm that's going to kind of weaken over land, possibly down to a depression, and it will reintensify in warmer waters in the central Gulf, anytime you get that reemergence, things can change. Timing can change. Timing can lead to changes in track. So we got to watch it closely, very closely. Do not take the initial cone to heart and take it to the bank and assume this is going to be it. We're on the left side of this, the far left side of the cone, but we're still in the cone of uncertainty. Yes, I'm cautiously optimistic. Perhaps the main impacts may trend east of us. I hope that continues, but we've been covering the Gulf long enough to know, and I know you know, that all it takes is a little more time sitting there and things can change. So we got to watch it closely. Let's zoom in. There's the spin right now. And again, it's moving south right now. It's moving south and southeast. The main center of circulation is kind of moving south. Now it's going to move up towards the north and northeast by Friday. It'll come back out into the central Gulf. Already we're seeing thunderstorms develop out in the northern Gulf. So we'll see an increase in moisture out to the north of it over the coming days. Let's look at wind shear. This is one of the reasons we cannot take early forecast tracks to heart. We know how early tracks can change like crazy. Look at previous storms that we know that are well known. Early cones were way off. So here's what's happening. The wind shear is much stronger in the darker purple. As we head towards the weekend, now this is a little late. This should be more Friday, Saturday. The wind shear actually picks up just north of it. So it's got to choose. Am I going to go east? Am I going to go west? Well, the models predict a lull as that wind shear moves off east. And so it might jog a little west. That's why I want to keep a, a close watch on it. There's no guarantee with this thing. 83 degree temperatures, the warmest temperatures in the Gulf are just north of the Yucatan. So I do think it'll re-intensify tropical storm most likely. A very weak hurricane is not out of the question, but I think a tropical storm is pretty much what we're going to see. Again, high res future track does have that moving through by Saturday. It'll be back in the central Gulf. For this reason of increased rain chances, uh, Sunday and Monday and even Tuesday will have to come up to 40% because that moisture is going to impact us regardless. But today, a 60% chance of storms for you. Some of those could be briefly heavy. Art. We will watch it very closely. Thank you, Colin. New information in that deadly gunfight at just outside of a bar in North Harris County. Deputies now saying this was a battle between two biker gangs and that dozens of shots were fired. It happened in the parking lot of the stadium sports bar on Spring Cypress. Investigators say two gangs got into a fight, started shooting at each other. One person was killed. A second person is now in the hospital. Deputies estimate 80 to 100 rounds were fired. Some of the bullets hit multiple vehicles in the parking lot. No arrest yet, but the shooting is, of course, still under investigation. A very encouraging sign that the violence over the death of George Floyd is beginning to subside. In the eighth straight night of protest, we saw less widespread violence and fewer clashes between police and protesters. Most of those who were arrested were violating curfew. Others decided to go home after police deployed tear gas. Now, this is according to the Associated Press, but 9,300 people have been arrested in protest all around the country, most of those in New York and Los Angeles. All right, let's take a quick look at uh, Houston City Hall, what it looked like early this morning. Beautiful, lit up with gold and red, a tribute to Yates High School. That, by the way, is where F uh, George Floyd played football when he was a teenager. The lights turned on as the march for Floyd came to an end. 
Here's ABC 13 reporter Courtney Fisher. 60,000 people united. This crowd goes all the way back to Discovery Green, still trying to get down here to City Hall. Different colors. It don't matter if you're black or you're white. Different generations. Young man, how old are you? And tell me why you came out. I'm 13. Why are you here today? I'm here for the Reverend St. George Floyd. One message. Time for justice. We need to stand up for, against injustice and, you know, stand with our black brothers and sisters. It's not going to change unless we're out here trying to make a difference. Protesters stayed peaceful, it and it was powerful. We have demonstrators on their stomach with their arms behind their back uh, in front of Houston police officers standing here. Houston, be proud. And in Houston, we want to work constructively, not destructively. The rest of the country sees you. Overnight, Shaq even talking about it on Jimmy Kimmel Live. Art Acevedo in Houston, what he did yeah. in marching with the people, that was a great thing. Yes. He and I was actually, he and I, he and I was actually in the police academy together. So, I saw him speak yesterday, and he had some really great things to say. And and you wish that there were more Art Acevedos out there when you hear him speak. Protesters inspired by those leaders, and you saw it in quiet moments like this. A man marching, stopped to pick up trash, helping his city, then returning to the cause. George Floyd's family led the way through downtown. All right, let me show you. They're uh, going into City Hall right now. Where city and state leaders promised Houston will keep working for change. I've never seen anything like this. It is time for a revolution of change for the dignity of all of us, no matter what our color. Incredible energy here downtown, here in front of City Hall yesterday. This morning, it's quiet. People still cleaning up, but so many of you left with those memories, memories you'll keep for forever. The big question, will change come? For now, reporting from downtown, Courtney Fisher, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. By the way, as a footnote here, there were about 200 people arrested yesterday in that rally. Most are accused of throwing rocks and bottles at officers. HPD saying that number is quite low given the size of yesterday's huge rally, somewhere around 60,000 people. Well, me meanwhile, the U.S. Surgeon General warns the ongoing protests could lead to a nation's next spike in coronavirus cases. But there's good news here. The country's top infectious disease expert says we could have a vaccine by the end of the year. Dr. Anthony Fauci says the biotech company Moderna should go into the final stage of trials by midsummer. That stage involves about 30,000 people who volunteered for the experiments. But be cautiously optimistic here. It took four years for the mumps vaccine to be developed, and that's the fastest any vaccine has ever been approved. Joe, they're fighting. What? They're fighting. Oh, yeah. They're fighting. They, they, he just, he just, um, oh my God, they're fighting outside the door. Yeah, One she's talking about the two alligators. A woman in Florida had that front row seat to the snout to snout bout between two alligators. They each snapped at each other and they're right there on the front door. They fought for about 15 minutes before finally just sort of, I guess, giving up and moving on. A good reason not to go outside. Stay in quarantine. That's it for us. Thanks for joining us. I'm Art Rascone. We'll get you back to your whatever you're going to be doing today. Have a terrific week, everyone. And we'll be right back here, same time, same place, tomorrow for the midday. <laughs>